Tonight, one of the biggest campus demonstrations in the city is gone, but protests have not stopped. Last night, nearly 300 people were arrested at Columbia and City College of New York. Today, new encampments have shown up at Fordham University, and demonstrators gathered outside Columbia's gates as the main lawn there is now empty. All that remains are faded spots of grass where the tents had been set up, and police officers monitoring the area. And a live look right now at this rally in Foley Square. Several groups including students and union workers have converged there. We have team coverage. Naveen Dhaliwal is at Foley Square. Marsha Kramer here in studio and she has new information from the NYPD. Let's begin with Lisa Rosner. She's live outside Columbia tonight. Lisa. Well, Christina Maurice Hamilton Hall, where this all went down last night, is still an active crime scene, according to the university, which is why we, the media, weren't allowed on campus today. But I spoke with some students who were on campus because they live here. They say it was much calmer today, and they can finally focus on their studies. The NYPD says students used a vending machine, chairs, even a rope to barricade themselves inside Hamilton Hall Tuesday night. It was very difficult for us to get in and push our way through because they were throwing objects at us. We tactically uh, had every team around the building to enter that building. More than 100 demonstrators arrested. Wednesday, dozens of faculty and students called it police brutality and rallied outside Amsterdam Avenue. Despite our peaceful, peaceful protest, the police ambushed us. We were tackled and beaten. They also celebrated the Gaza Solidarity encampment that police also disbanded. They ignited a nationwide movement. What we are witnessing in terms of police repression is a tiny fraction of what people under occupation in right. Palestine have been That's experiencing right. for 56 years. At Columbia, that movement included anti-Semitic language by some, says the mayor and the university. Faculty behind the movement deny it. Jewish and pro-Israel students say they did not feel safe. We thought it would never even escalate. It's proven that the small things really did matter. It is very scary to have cops on campus, but I also think it was the necessary action. It was what was, what was required. They vandalized the building. They broke windows to get in there. The rhetoric that they were using was absolutely unacceptable. There is a core inside faculty and students, and the, the university is, I think, reluctant to hold them responsible, but it has to. Campus access remains limited to students who live there and essential faculty. I can finally breathe deeply because it's been a huge source of anxiety. We saw families moving out a week earlier than scheduled. It's chaotic, yeah, yeah. And he's got his exam still. He still has to... Get ready for his exams. I mean, it is what it is. Finals are virtual, so that is why you do see some students heading home. Commencement is scheduled for May 15th. We're told the NYPD will stay on campus through at least May 17th. The president, in a letter to the community, said, quote, it is going to take time to heal. Coming up at 6 p.m., we speak with a student who left campus and may not be coming back to finish her academic career here. We're live in Morningside Heights. Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. All right, Lisa, thank you. And within the past hour, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg spoke about the arrests. Uh, we will look carefully at each individual case on our docket and make decisions based on the facts uh, and the law. Uh, that will include a thorough review of uh, body cam footage um, and interviews with witnesses. Bragg said that arraignments will begin later tonight. Tonight, top officials say the decision to end the unrest at Columbia and City College came after it became clear to the mayor, the NYPD, and school officials that outside agitators are involved. CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer joins us now with that part of the story. Marsha. Christina Maurice, Governor Hochul said the Columbia protesters crossed a line when they occupied a building and destroyed property. Mayor Adams worried about outside elements, quote, radicalizing our children. Mayor Adams dramatically held up a letter from the president of Columbia asking the NYPD to stop the protest because outside agitators were pulling the strings. This is a global problem that young people are being influenced by those who are professionals 
at radicalizing our children, and I'm not going to allow that to happen as the mayor of the city of New York. There was a lot of drama as officials defended their decision to stop protesters at Columbia University and City College. Pictures of NYPD cops in riot gear using a portable ramp to end the occupation of Hamilton Hall. The police commissioner showing the chain locks that barred the doors. They tried to lock us out, but the NYPD and the people of the city of New York will never be locked out. Officials said the lock chain showed off by officials is one of many protesters used throughout the building to keep officials out. Once inside, officials found other evidence of the tactics, including a flyer with a map of protests. Officials trying to explain why they knew the students were getting outside aid from agitators. The black block attire, the breaking windows, breaking doors, the vandalism, property destruction, the barricading, makeshift weapons that we um, um, recovered in the encampment and so that change in tactics is why we had a real elevated concern around public safety. This is an, e an ongoing evolving investigation. The intelligence division must be extremely sensitive about information they release. Governor Hochul backing the NYPD. Oh, when that protest evolves into violence, vandalism, destruction of property, a line has been crossed. Officials were asked just how many of the 282 arrested were outside agitators. We'll have the answer sometime today. We haven't broken it down yet. People had this to say outside the court where the protesters were taken. They did not listen. They proceeded with the arrests, even though I complied with their orders to exit the campus. We are not yet aware of what the consequences would be. I mean, hopefully they understand that we were not being violent. Now, I have repeatedly asked the mayor's office and the NYPD for the number of outside agitators who were actually arrested. So far, those numbers have not been made available. Maurice and Christine. Okay, Marsha, thank you. Thank you, Marsha. The campus at City College is shut down today with all classes moved online until further notice. Police say 173 people were arrested near the Hamilton Heights campus last night. You can see here the bright red flares that lit up the campus arch at the height of the demonstration. College administrators say that they called the NYPD to clear the quad after protesters refused orders to leave. The high school for math, science and engineering is also on that campus and classes for those students were also remote today. Happening now, hundreds of people coming together downtown now for a massive pro-Palestinian rally in Foley Square. And CBS 2's Naveen Dhaliwal is there for us live. Naveen? Now, yeah, Christine, there are hundreds of demonstrators here in Foley Square from all walks of life and from various groups, including students. Now, this rally started around 4 p.m. and it quickly grew to this large crowd that you see. Now, they set up a stage. They're standing with the students who have been demonstrating for more than two weeks now here in New York and around the country. Many here holding signs uh, that read Free Palestine. They've been chanting, coming together, uh, standing in Solidarity. Now, this gathering is coming off of a very volatile night after police made hundreds of arrests at Columbia University as well as City College. Now, some of these demonstrators are students, uh, groups of the ones here, that is in Foley Square, uh, along with work, working class citizens who are supporting students at Columbia, saying they have the right to protest and get their word out. Now, that message, once again, pro-Palestinian demonstrators want schools to stop doing business with Israel or companies support the war in Gaza. Even here, they say they want the war to stop, and they won't stop until that happens. We're live in Foley Square, Naveen Dhaliwal, CBS 2 News. Naveen, thank you. Uptown now to the Upper West Side, a pro-Palestinian demonstration underway at Fordham University's campus at Lincoln Center. Around half a dozen tents are up inside a building there. Police are on standby, but so far, the university has not asked for officers to actually move in. Our students here is really important because our school is supposed to be a city to us and um, they teach us about care of personnel, which is a value of the Jesuit um, institution, and yet there is no care of the person here. There is a lack of the care here. Hard to hear there, but she was blasting the Jesuit institution for not caring for people there. Uh, Fordham says it is does plan uh, to release a statement in response to today's protest at some point this evening.